don't shoot me again. Please don't. Mr. Hernandez, I'm Sergeant Frank Salerno. This is my partner, Gil Carrillo. We're Los Angeles Sheriff's investigators. Dale's dead, isn't she? Was she a roommate? Her name is... was Dale Okazaki. Why would anybody do this to us? I don't know. Can you tell us what happened? It happened so fast. I parked my car in the garage. Suddenly he was in there. He didn't say anything. He just shot at me for no reason. And then he went inside. It's a good thing you were holding your keys. They deflected the bullet. Can you tell us what this man looked like? Um, his hair, it, it was curly. I remember his teeth, they were really bad. You know, run and all. We'd have a better chance of catching him if he would uh, sit down with our artist and help him make a drawing of the guy. I'll try. Your boyfriend called. He's going straight to the hospital. He'll meet you there. Thank you. Lie down. <sighs> so what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, it's a strange one. Could just be a burglar who got surprised. Yeah, but... So the burglar goes into the house and kills the Okazaki woman? After he's been surprised by Hernandez in the garage? Yeah, and why didn't he finish Hernandez when he had the chance? Right. Just doesn't hang together. What is this? Breakfast. I got you a deluxe burrito. Beans and sausage, salsa picante, peppers and onions. All right, thanks very much for getting it, but you know, I can't eat it. Why not? Fear. 
It's not that picante. You'll like it. <laughs> Listen, Gil, I got to tell you something. I don't need anything that's made in the cafeteria. This is the food of Aztec kings. This is East L.A. food. It's good for the soul. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Come on. Finish that on the way downstairs. Phil Thomas wants to see us. Well, the city must be safe. Yes, that's Frank cool. Salerno isn't out at a crime scene. Hello, Miss Clark. Hi. I'd like you to meet my new partner, Gil Carrillo, and Clark, Channel 3. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Yes. So where's the Siamese twins? What? I think he means my camera and sound. They're having coffee. <laughs> Listen, is there uh, anything special about the shooting of those two women at that house in Rosemead? No, nothing special. No motive, no suspect. Just checking. And no story. What's that supposed to mean? Well, for you media types, there's two kinds of homicides. There's the who done it and the who cares. And most of the time, you don't care. Not broadcasting isn't the same as not caring. Look, I've got over 40 separate police departments I have to check with besides the sheriff department. Whether you like it or not, yours is just another L.A. County murder. Touchy. Not really. Uh, listen, when you get into the uh, whodunit part, why don't you let me know? I'll make you a hero again. Ah, the truth comes out. Ann Clark was your press agent on the Hillside Strangler case? Yeah. She did her best to screw up that case, too. I like her. You like everybody. Look at this damn place. I've been testifying for three days in a 10-year-old homicide case where the defense attorney keeps going over the crime scene inch by inch by inch. The judge ought to cut him off, but no. What do you got, Phil? Monterey Park had a young Asian woman pulled out of her car, shot and killed less than an hour and two miles from where your victims were hit. They think it's either gang violence or robbery. What do you think? I think there's a probable make on the 22 between both killings. You positive? With the 22, the best I can do is probable. The bullet isn't jacketed. I just don't have enough diameter to work with. Monterey Park got any witnesses? Uh, yeah, some guy heard the shots and saw the suspect get away. Let's send the composite that Maria Hernandez made over to Monterey Park. See what their witness got to say. Maybe we'll get lucky. Thanks, Phil. Gonna be late? I don't know. It's uh, it's a double homicide. Mm. You feel like waiting up? I don't know, Gil. Take your choice. Hero or lover? Well, how about I'm the hero first and then you reward me? Red dog! Ah, blind said it again! I think I fumbled! Let's go to the place on board, Dad! Oh, I got to take a rain check, Joss. I got to go to work. You always have to go to work. Well, I know, but uh, that's how I keep your mama in diamonds and furs. I wish. Get down, get down. Daddy. Renee. You can't, Kiki. I like the way your daddy dances. Yeah. How do you think I won your mama's heart? He wasn't dancing. Hey, we were listening to that. You were? I thought you were doing your homework. Where's the call out at? It's Whittier, I think. Well, then you won't be home late. That's Frank. Mm. Daddy, be careful. Yeah, I will. You girls be good. So did Monterey Park have any luck with the composite? No, just a dead end. Damn. What do we have, Phil? The victims are husband and wife, both Caucasian. 
Vincent Cesaro. He's about 60. His wife's name is Maxine. 40-ish. How were they killed? He was on the couch. She's in the bedroom. Both were shot in the head. My preliminary guess is a 22. You ready to upgrade your make from probable to positive, Phil? I think the killer left by the front door, but he probably got in back here. We got a good print on the bucket and another one in the dirt. Whoever did this also used a knife on the woman. Carved her up like a piece of meat. And then he cut her eyes out. This bastard took her eyes with him. Last night in Eagle Rock, an eight-year-old girl was kidnapped and raped. We got this print at the scene. It matches exactly this print, which we got out at the Cesaro house. The lab says we also have a probable make on the uh, weapon in the Cesaro killings to the shootings of the Asian women in Rosemead, Monterey Park. But we think it's all tied to one guy. Oh, wait a minute. You got a child molester and you got a murderer. I don't see the connection. Uh, the connection isn't all that obvious, Captain. I mean... There's no pattern to the crimes. Yeah, sometimes there's a murder, sometimes a burglary. Sometimes he just goes after kids. But it's one guy. I can feel it. What do the other departments think? That we're crazy. The M.O.s indicate we should be looking for several people. But, sir, I prefer to go with the evidence, all right? The tennis shoe prints and the ballistics all point to one suspect, and we better do something about him. What do you need? Well... We could use some manpower. The leads go all over the place. Okay, I can give you three teams. Frank, you coordinate. Put this case on the top of your list. Thanks. Remember the shooting of those two women in Rosemead? Yeah, but there was nothing special about it. I just got a call from a friendly source who tells me that there's a mini task force being formed up in Homicide, that the Rosemead shootings are part of what they're investigating. What the hell is that all about? That's what I originally sent you to find out. I talked to the detectives. And you know, a good reporter finds out what the story really is. I can get a runner to pick up press releases. Three rapes, definitively tied into our case. Five burglaries, okay? Three child molestations, four murders. All committed right in this area. And then, last night, William Doy, 60 years old, took a probable 22 in the head. Aren't we missing something here? Half these victims are Asian. 
Yeah, we kicked that around a bit, but, you know, it could be just a coincidence. The area he's hitting in right now has a large Asian population. Yeah, there's no pattern to the age of victims or the type of crime or the type of house or the color of house or anything. We do know that he's wearing gloves, which is why we're not getting any prints. And, uh, what? He is taking property on the burglaries, mostly jewelry. So, let's start checking the pawn shops. He's got to be dumping the stuff someplace. Russo and I tracked down that tennis shoe print. It's a special shoe made by Avia, and there are only 1,356 distributed. That's great, Washington. That's going to make it that much easier for you when you start tracing every bill of sale today. <laughs> Why did I know you were going to say that? I was just coming to see you. Oh, that's too bad. You just missed me. You haven't been returning my calls. I didn't get any calls. Did you get any calls? I didn't get any calls. I'm sorry. OK, forget the calls. You lied to me, Frank. You told me there was no motive or suspect in the Okazaki killing. I wasn't lying. Oh, really? Well, I've been doing some checking. What about William Doy, Miss Yu, the Zazaros? Did I miss any? All those cases are under investigation. Do these killings have any connection to the task force that's been formed in homicide? Task force? What task force? Salerno, I'm going to find out what's going on with or without your cooperation. You know, you used to be a pretty easy guy to talk to. Now you turned into a real hard nose. Look, this is different. Really different. In what way different? What are you calling this killer? Suspect. Is she going to start putting heat on us? Oh, not just her. We're going to have the whole damn press corps down here poking around. And the more they learn, the more likely our suspect will get nervous and split. Channel 3 Exclusive News has learned that two elderly sisters, Mabel Bell and Florence Lang, were brutally attacked while they sat watching television in their home. Although Los Angeles Sheriff homicide detectives would not be interviewed, the Night Stalker Task Force has been to the scene of this terrible crime. The task force has been investigating the Night Stalker killings for over eight weeks. There appear to be no leads. This maniac has killed five people already. I got a wife and kid to worry about, and I'll tell you, I got my hunting rifle stashed under my bed. If he comes for me, I'm going to be ready. Feel yet? Uh, no thanks. Mrs. Bell didn't make it. She died an hour and a half ago. What about her sister? Yeah, well, she's still hanging on, but I don't think she's gonna be much use to us. Unbelievable. You work hard your whole life, you take good care of your family. Go to bed one night and get beat to death by this bastard. For what? Take it easy, Gil. Get him. When? When am I gonna get him? It's not necessarily the same guy. Mrs. Bell had a pentagram drawn on her thigh. There was another one on the wall. With all the other murders, there was none of that satanic crap. Frank, it's him. He's working my neighborhood now. My wife is starting to ask me questions. I don't know what to tell her. Want another drink? <sighs> no, I better get home before Pearl files a missing persons report. I'll see you. Gil. We are gonna get him. We'll make a mistake soon.
I pulled you over, sir? No. Failed to come to a complete stop back at that stop sign. May I see your driver's license, please? Don't have it. Step out of the car, please. Do you have any identification at all? No. All right. What's your name? Sanchez. Jose Sanchez. Date of birth? April 2nd, 61. Where do you live, Mr. Sanchez? 302 Elmwood. 302 Elmwood. All right, just hang loose a minute. This won't take long. All units, an attempted kidnapping just occurred at York and North Broadway by a male, dark, driving a late model red Toyota. Suspect was last seen driving westbound from York and North Broadway. Peterson married? Yeah, last time I heard. Well, I'll take a chance and send the invitation to Mr. and Mrs. I'm inviting the Keltners. No, you're not. Why not? Because I don't like the Keltners. Oh, they invited us to their son's wedding. Well, I didn't go. Because you were working, but we were still invited. And I still don't like the Keltners. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Great. It's about time we hit something. Right. Thanks, Gil. Guess I'll finish this on my own. Sorry. It's important. I love you. I still can't stand the Keltners. You'll have to excuse me. I'm not used to opening up this office. My assistant's here, usually, before me. We want to thank you for coming in, Dr. Chow. Let me turn on some lights. I hope I can find the file. I wish Marshall were here. It is. Jose Sanchez. Does this drawing resemble Mr. Sanchez? I think that's him. He was in here only one time. Could he give you an address? We must have when he filled out the patient information form. Here, Jose Sanchez, 302 Ellenwood Road. Did he make another appointment when he was in here last time? We can check the book. His teeth were in very bad condition. I just gave you his address. Why don't you just go up and pick him up? Well, we'd love to, but that address doesn't exist. We already checked it out. What did he do? We don't know that he did anything. We just want to talk to him. Well. I didn't see anything. Wait, here it is. Jose Sanchez, 3 p.m., the 22nd. You think he'll show? It's in the book.
the hell's keeping this guy? It's after 4 o'clock. I don't know. Maybe he figures we found the card. Maybe he forgot about the appointment. I don't know. You want to call it off for today? No. He's open till 5. Let's wait it out. What? No, I'm just thinking how lucky I am. How lucky are you, Frank? Well, it is not winter, you know, and I got to roll up the windows. You suffer in silence for a change. It's too damn hot. <laughs> Have a little more salsa, huh? Shut up. There he is. There he is. Target approaching location. Take him. Police officer, I'd like to talk to you. You're under arrest for suspicion of murder. Pareces ansioso porque hiciste algo malo. Entonces no hay razón para tener miedo. Dime si puedes qué tanto tiempo qué tanto tiempo ha sido paciente. What's up, Captain? Your suspect's alibi checks out. The guy was in prison until last week. He's not your man. You're positive the guy you arrested at the dentist's office is clean? Yes, sir. He just was released from the county jail. He was doing six months on a bad check charge. Anything from the streets yet? Zero. No trace of the stolen property. We squeezed all our informants, nothing. We'd like to send out this special bulletin to most of the dentists in the area. If he tries to get treatment somewhere else, we might get tipped off. With that many bulletins out, we also buy ourselves a pretty good chance of a leak. Yeah, I don't like it much either. But. If one dentist calls in, that's it. Send it out. There's something else we should talk about. Do you feel that air conditioning? We've got the whole San Gabriel Valley sleeping with their windows open because of this heat wave. This guy takes advantage of those open windows. We know that. The citizens don't. We have to tell them. During recent months, a number of sexual assaults and murders may have been committed by the same individual in the San Gabriel Valley. What is that? Sheriff's Department's press release. I mean, listen to this. Investigation has revealed that in many cases, doors and windows have been left unlocked due to warm weather. I mean, it's the stalker. It has to be. And you know that. The papers know that. The networks know that. That's not enough. You've got to know it first, and you've got to be able to prove it. What do the cops have to say? <laughs> As usual, nothing. I mean, I've never worked on a case where the lid has been shut so tightly. Mm. Brown's got connections downtown. What if I swing him over to help you out? I don't want any help. This is my story. What's wrong? Something bothering you? It's this assignment. I've never been on an assignment like this. I can't get any information. This killer, the Night Stalker, he really has people afraid. So what is the problem? That's a great angle for you. City held hostage. That's a whole new approach to the story.
Yeah. How long ago? Why wasn't it on the radio? Never mind, I'll roll on it. It's the same case, isn't it? I don't know, that's what I gotta find out. Thanks. Yeah? Did you get that call, Frank? No, I got, I got the other notification. How far from that location is this one? All right, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll cover the first one. All right. The stalker again? We think so, yeah. This is the third time you've received a double notification, Gil. I'm getting scared. You have nothing to worry about, Pearl. Is that why you stay up listening to police calls instead of going to sleep? <sighs> Look, I'm just trying to get a handle on this. Catch him, honey, soon. I'm trying, baby. I am trying. Mary was going to Australia this summer with her, her senior citizens group. She was really looking forward to that trip. Was she aware of the recent murders in this area? Oh, sure. We were talking about this killer just the other day. We've all been afraid, but where can we go? What can we do? You're the one that found her, weren't you? I can't get that out of my mind. When I woke up this morning, I saw the screen was off her living room window. As soon as I went inside, I knew something was wrong. The lamp was lying on the floor, and things were just thrown all about it. Did you hear anything at all? No. What bothers me is that I saw this tall, dark man walking in the neighborhood, and he just didn't seem to belong. M maybe if I'd called the police, this wouldn't have happened to Mary. Why do you think he's connected with her murder? Well, the police showed me a drawing of a suspect, and... I think it's the same man. Did they appear to agree with you? I think so. They were very excited about some tennis shoe print that they found under the living room window. Tennis shoe print? Come on, Anne. You can't broadcast that information. Confirm or deny. True or false, yes or no. Come on yourself, Frank. It's a very easy question. Do you or do you not have tennis shoe print evidence on this killer? If any of this stuff gets out, you can ruin the entire investigation. Well, it's my decision, not yours. Never was, never will be. I'll make a deal with you, all right? I'll give you the whole story if you agree not to broadcast any of it until I say so. I'll tell you what. I won't broadcast Unless I get corroboration from an independent source. Not good enough. Oh, come on, then. We're back to square one. Confirm or deny. All right. We have matched tennis shoe prints from several murders and a kidnapping. It's the only evidence we got. And if you go on the air with this, that killer will probably dump the sneakers and will never be able to identify him. Damn it, Frank, that's not fair. This is a good story. You can't lay that kind of responsibility on me. Anne, right now, we got this killer contained in the San Gabriel Valley. He's territorial. It's only a matter of time until we get him. So what's it gonna be? Your ratings or your conscience?
Phil, Carrillo just called in from Glendale. A double murder. It's the stalker. Well, you better go pick Gil up. LAPD's investigating a murder in Sunland. It could also be him. Phil, Sunland is in the San Fernando Valley. That's more than 20 miles from San Gabriel. Frank, I don't give a damn if it's in China. It looks like it could be the stalker. The one sure thing we got on this guy is his geography. There's a pattern. He's contained. Well, what if he isn't? The suspect shot the husband right off the bat, then raped his wife. They're both recent immigrants from Thailand. Where'd they take? <clears throat> well, the wife's not sure, but it could be as much as 30 grand in money and jewels. Think this guy's tied into your killer? What are we going to do now, Frank? Well, call Grimm's office. Tell him the Night Stalker has just started hitting out of his territory. Now he's hitting out by my house, too. wrong. Nothing's wrong. Well, you're a nervous wreck. I, I just have a few things on my mind. From work? No. I was thinking about Butch's wedding, you know. Here, I've been so busy lately, and uh, you've been having to make all the arrangements. <laughs> Frank, in all the years you've been on the job, I have never asked you any questions. But you've never brought it home before. I'm going to start wondering why it's home now. I'm sorry, Jane. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. I'll be right back. What's up? I got a funny feeling about tonight. No, I'm getting the same vibes. Huh. He's gonna go out tonight. I know it. Yeah, but where? I wish I knew. It's driving me crazy. You know, Frank, I wonder if he ever thinks about us. The way we think about him. Yeah. Me too.
are you? What are you doing here? Shut up, bitch. <laughs> planning on rigging these for a long time. It's not just him. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry, honey. What's really wrong? Is it that couple that was shot a little way from here? The Petersons? He's right in our backyard, Jane. It's never happened to us before. Well, the Petersons are going to be OK, aren't they? They survived. I don't know if they're gonna be okay. How do you live with that memory? I don't know if I could. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. No, it's not. My job is to get guys like that off the streets. People count on that. I count on it. When I went to the store, this was the last set of bells, you know? <laughs> They're all sold out of locks. People are scared. They feel they can't count on us anymore. You're going to catch him. I know you will. Ann Clark has been covering the Night Stalker case for exclusive news since the beginning. And she's here tonight with a special report. Ann? Thanks, Rip. The dictionary defines fear as a feeling of anxiety caused by the presence of danger or evil. At no time in the history of Los Angeles has this definition been more poignant than during the current reign of terror of the Night Stalker. Scared. I think everybody else is scared along with us. You know, it's a scary situation. Okay. I mean, what else can I I can't put it any better than that. I've been uh, very apprehensive. I keep my uh, doors locked and my, uh, my guns loaded. New memberships in gun clubs have increased over 200% in the last month. The majority of these members are women. Women who are single, alone, and afraid. Do that or be a sitting duck. I have grandchildren. They come to stay. Should I sit by and watch them get killed, or should I try to save them? <laughs> For some, the anxiety is lessened by getting a guard dog. Others learn self-defense. Communities are on the alert. Neighborhood watch committees have been organized, but the fear continues to escalate. And citizens are losing faith in the ability of the police to protect them. Well, I think it's a community affair. Uh, I think police uh, just can't take care of everything. As time goes by, with less and less progress being made by the authorities, the citizens are beginning to believe that the night and the city do belong to the Night Stalker. Good story, Anne. Is there anything our public can do to protect themselves? The best thing is for them to remember to keep their doors and windows locked no matter how hot it gets outside. And speaking of hot, Vance Kramer will be here with the latest on our current heat wave when exclusive news continues right after these messages. Thanks, guys. And good story. Thanks. Really, that was some fine work. Thank you. I talked to Harry about doing a special on the Night Stalker. You know, the whole shot, the killings, the task force, everything. Well, what did he say? He was interested. He said there might even be a good chance of running it nationally with you as a co-host. Oh, you're kidding. But there's a catch. 
we'd have to pick up something new, anything that would be a breakthrough in the case. He doesn't want a special just to rehash what we've already aired. I'll, I'll keep my eyes open. Peter. Yeah. Could you uh, walk me to my car? Sure. Hello, Gil. I've been waiting for you. What's going on, baby? Where are the kids? They're with my folks. We're going to stay with them for a while. Why? You have to ask. I'm scared, Gil. You're never home, and I'm scared. I can't help it. OK, look, let's, let's just talk this out, all right? I, I'm doing the best I can, sweetheart. You feel like I'm letting you down, is that it? You hit it on the nose. You're damn right, you're letting me down. Well, what do you want me to do, Pearl? Pearl? That call out in Diamond Bar, it was him again, wasn't it? Yeah, well, we think it was. That's right down the street, Gil. I know where it is. You don't think I worry about you and the kids? But it came down to a choice between us and your job, and you chose your job. My, jo my job puts food on that table. You never objected before. I never was afraid before. I didn't marry your work, Gil. I married you. This is not about me, Pearl. This is not my fault. It's not even about us. It's about him. And you know it. Maybe you're right. Then the only thing that'll help is for you to catch him. What do you think I'm trying to do? I can't stay here alone anymore, Gil. <sighs> Take care of yourself, okay? Pearl. Phil Thomas wanted you to see these right away. Oh, please. That'd be good news. He changed guns on us. He used the 25 in the last two killings. That's great. Phil can give us a positive make on his 25. We catch him with this gun, he's nailed. Hey, Frank, Gil, Board of Supervisors approved the reward money. It's about time. Now everybody in L.A. will be looking for him. Right. We saw this on the mirror. We thought there might be a connection to your suspect. But the weapon doesn't fit. This guy used a 25, not a 22. It fits. Good God in heaven. And we thought it was hard trying to catch him in a valley. 
Screws in the whole damn state, Frank. Well, things move a little quicker up here than they do in L.A. City Council's pre-approved a reward, and the mayor's got a press conference this afternoon. We've been very careful what we told the press. Don't worry about the mayor. She's smart, and she's been briefed. The police are asking for information that can lead to his arrest and capture. So I would ask everybody, please, Around closely here. study this composite. Is this the mayor? Uh, he's someone that yeah. will go into a home at night and will kill, and kills at random. There's a $10,000 reward for any information which can lead to his arrest and conviction. Uh, mayor, how do the police know this murder is tied to the Night Stalker slayings in Los Angeles? The ballistics on the weapon uh, that killed both Mr. and Mrs. Pan out on eucalyptus over the weekend are the same ballistics on, I understand, more than a dozen murders uh, committed in Southern California. Oh, great. And That's great. Well, it won't be the same ballistics for very much longer, will it? Huh? Because now he's going to dump the damn gun. We had one rock-solid piece of evidence against this guy. Now your mayor's going to spit it out on national television. Hey, real good briefing. That was the best piece of information we had. Somebody out there? may not be anything, but my mom's part of the new neighborhood watch program, and she said I should call in if I saw anything suspicious. After he shoots our victim three times in the head, he ties up his fiance and rapes her. Now get this. Then he goes into the kitchen, helps himself to dinner. He sits in front of the refrigerator, eating their leftovers for over an hour. Oh, my God. All right, any stolen property? Well, uh, mostly jewelry. We'll get a list tomorrow. A woman's in pretty bad shape. Did you give us an ID on the composite? Like I said, we'll talk to her again tomorrow. A kid spotted a car cruise in the area with its lights off just before the shooting. Toyota station wagon. Does that ring any bells? Yeah, that rings some bells. Yeah, that's what he likes to use. Kid got most of the plate. Well, that's something. One more thing. Our boy's getting pretty bold. He left a message for you with the victim. Oh, yeah? What? Tell him the Night Stalker was here. And now we'll go to Carrie with the latest on the Night Stalker. While investigation of the Night Stalker centered in San Francisco, the elusive killer traveled the length of the state last night to strike and miss. Mom, Mom, it's Dad! Way ...between Los Angeles and San Diego. Despite the efforts of 50 full-time investigators from six agencies, the Night Stalker task force... Finish your homework, no buddy. ...to capturing him today... But, Mom, it's Dad! ...three months ago. What's the 
matter, Micha? You don't feel good? I feel okay. Okay, people don't lay in bed crying. I just miss Daddy. I miss him so much. Oh, sweetheart. I miss him too. This is 7 Adam 13, confirm, 187 vehicle report. Orange Toyota, license 930, Victor Echo Lima. I just spoke to Captain Grimm. Keep the car under surveillance overnight. If he doesn't pick it up by morning, we'll tow it to the lab. Hope we get lucky. Yeah, thanks a lot. You got it. Hi. What? Who are you? Hamilton. I just started on the force today. So? So I just took this over the phone. Guy's name is Jesse, claims he knows who the stalker is. So do a lot of people. I know, but this guy described a couple of the stolen jewelry pieces real well. And uh, it says in the report that we never released that information. Hamilton, where have you been? You guys should have called me up here earlier. I could have solved this thing on the first day. Why this guy? Boom. <laughs> Guys, Salerno and Grillo. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, must be Jesse, huh? Yeah. Got a name for us? Just the first one. His name is Rick. Well, what about Rick? <laughs> Mexican from El Paso. <laughs> this one weird dude, man. Like, I don't want any part of him. What's so weird about him? Drawing pentagrams. Always thinking about power of fate, power of fate, like he's on some mission from the devil or something. And how do you know so much about him? I used to run with him. Yeah, I admit it, I, I ain't no angel. Uh, maybe I even done some things that shouldn't have been done, but I ain't never killed nobody. You can bet on that, right? Right, yeah, uh huh? I want him, Jesse. I want him now. We're gonna take you down to the station now, and you're going to remember every place that this guy, Rick, ever ate or drank or slept or blew his nose? That's why I called you in the first place. Yeah, I, I ain't interested uh, just in the reward money, you know? Yeah, right. right. Oh, I'll bet you're just an upstanding, civic-minded individual, aren't you? Careful, careful! I don't want to see your damn prints on that vehicle. We struck out every time so far. He's either wearing gloves or he's wiping clean. Well, we got a new toy. The laser beam and the fumes from super glue, we can pick up any prints that some guy has tried to wipe. Yeah. Well, just give me something to go on. Hey, Frank. I want him too, you know? Sorry, Phil. I'm tired of notifying him next to Ken. That's all. gonna take. Beats me.
How's the family? Not good. I guess I never understood how tough it is being married to a cop until now. Huh. No fun and games, huh? Not too many. Jane all right? Oh, well. Huh. Jane's been a regular trooper for more than 25 years now. Anyway, it's different for us. Our kids are all grown. Yeah. So he got to you too, didn't he, Frank? What time is it? Three in the morning. I feel terrible. You look terrible. How can you drink coffee in this heat? It helps me sleep. No, <laughs> it's a joke. found one print that doesn't belong. If it's good enough, that's all we need. Oh, it's good enough, all right. We just finished the programming before you arrived. I appreciate the effort. No problem. The image scanner will automatically initiate a search and print out a hit list. So what do we do, run down the list till we get a make? Oh, well, we probably won't have to do that. The computer will assign a number to each name that's on the list, plus a probability that it's the target. Most of the time, the number one choice is right. Will it take long? Are you kidding? <laughs> this baby can flip through 650 prints a second. We'll go through her whole memory in just a few minutes. Ah, there it is. According to the computer, number one on the list has a probability rating four times as high as that of the nearest contender. Richard Ramirez. You've already met Chief Gates from the Los Angeles Police Department. This is Sheriff Brad Gates from Orange County. How do you do? Sheriff. Hi there, how are you? Nice to meet you. What'd you find out? We showed Ramirez's mugshot to our informant. Positive make, no doubt about it. And we're very confident that we have pinpointed his hangouts. Give us another 24 hours and we'll have him wrapped up. Gentlemen, how do you feel? Well, I can appreciate what Frank and Gill are saying, but uh, we have to release the information. What happens if he kills someone in the 24 hours before we catch him? Yes, I agree with Daryl. Our obligation is to a potential victim. Sir, if his identity is made public, we may never see him again. Yeah, all he has to do is skip into Mexico, and that'll be it. I don't think this is a question of shall we release. We can't not release. Look, right now, he hasn't got a clue that we know who he is and where he is. He could walk into our hands any minute. I'm sorry, Frank. We've got to release. Let's call Chief Murphy in San Francisco. If he agrees with our decision, we'll hold simultaneous news conferences within the hour. Frank, if 
I had been there in the trenches the way you and your men have been for the last five months, I'd be arguing the same way. Yeah. Well, Miss Hope Ramirez doesn't read the papers. Los Angeles will be departing from stop number two. Bus number 169 leaving for Las Vegas will be departing from stop number 10. Bus number 676 leaving for Tijuana, Mexico will be departing from stop number eight. Bus number 812 leaving for Albuquerque, New Mexico will be departing from stop number 20. Bus number three Leaving for Prescott, Arizona, will be departing from stop number seven. Bus number 961, leaving for Santa Fe, New Mexico, will be departing from stop number 12. Bus number 767, leaving for Eagles, will be departing from stop number 10. Bus number 218, leaving for Flagstaff. Stop number One Adam Six, One Adam Six, see the man, possible wanted 187 suspect, 800 block of town. Your call is code two. <laughs> Suspect Richard Ramirez, last seen running eastbound from the 800 block of Town Street. Yo, Frank, pick up line three. Salam. We're on our way. He's been spotted in closing. Yeah! A moment? Yeah, but just a moment. They think they're pursuing Ramirez. I'm gonna send Judy out on this one. What? You can't do that. Oh, yes, I can, and I am. 
This is my story. I've been on it since the beginning. I've been talking to my source downtown. You had that tennis shoe clue a long time, Anne, and you sat on it. That's right, Peter. I had it. I had it, and I sat on it. We could have scooped the other networks with that story. You could have had that special. My God, do you have any idea what that would have meant to a station like ours? What the hell is wrong with you? If I'd released that information, it would have taken that much longer for them to catch this guy. Do you realize how many more people might have died? What the hell is that worth? I'm sorry. <sighs> Bring back a good story. We're following him. Stop, stop. Drop me off. Call the cops. What do you want from me? What the hell do you want? Let's keep them boxed in. Seal it off at Brooklyn Avenue. Control, this is King 12. Request patrol units establish a perimeter at Brooklyn on the north. Indiana Street on the east, 4 Adam 3, 4 Adam 16. Proceed to Olympic Boulevard on south and meet 4 L30.
What's your name? Richard Ayala. One more time. What's your name? Richard Ramirez. It's me, man. Richard Ramirez was, in the truest sense, a community effort. This same community, so terrorized by the Night Stalker, can now finally sleep in peace, opening their doors and windows in this heat wave, as the suspect is now in custody. We're going to be transporting you to county jail. You can call an attorney when you get there. Officers. You used to learn in Korea, weren't you? You got the hillside stranglers. They were in this room. 
No kidding. You know, I was bigger than them. I killed over 20 people. Why did you do that? Why? Man, I liked seeing people die. <laughs> I have been trying to think what to say to you. And there is nothing. You think I'm crazy? But you don't know Satan. Mm hmm. Why don't I feel like we won, Frank? Nobody won. Too many people got hurt. We're gonna be living with this one for a long time. Yeah, they caught him about an hour ago. No, no, I'm gonna send the crew in soon with the tape. No, no, Tammy can do the story on the 6 o'clock. I don't mind. Yeah. I love you, too. Hi. Hi. And, uh, partner, I got to make a phone call. Nice so, uh, tie. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, it was the photo in the press that caught him. Um, listen, I'm sorry I so tough on you. Does that mean I'm going to get uh, better cooperation on the next case? No. <laughs> We've got to go case by case. But I do owe you one for sitting on the tennis shoe evidence. So? So, uh, you got your camera crew here? Yeah. Well, if you happen to be downstairs in the next five minutes, you just might get the only exclusive shots of the Night Stalker being transferred out of this station. Frank, love you, Salerno. Sweetheart, it's me. Did you hear? It's over. Are you all right? I'm fine. Look, I don't know how long I'm going to have to be here tonight, but I want you to come home. We're on our way. I'll see you at home. Baby? Mm hmm? I missed you too, honey. See you tonight. Here they come. Mr. Ramirez, would you care to make a comment? Are you the Night Stalker? All right, that's it. Thank you. Easy does it. Richard Ramirez was brought to trial on 13 counts of murder, five counts of attempted murder, 11 counts of sexual assault, and 14 counts of burglary. On September 20th, 1989, he was found guilty on all counts. <laughs>